Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Christeter. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. And today I wanna to go over 10 different tips for ways you can edit your automation. If you have been making music in live or any software ever, you know that automation is a really important way to make your sounds grow and change and evolve over time and just make them more interesting in general. So I wanna go over 10 different ways you can take a look at tweaking or editing your automation once it's been put in there. So first off, uh, we can see here I've got just some MIDI notes and I've got a little bit of an automation moving up and down that I recorded with my MIDI controller. So the first thing I want to talk about is a way to simplify our automation. You can see that we have tons of breakpoints in here because I recorded this live. If I would like to simplify it, I can select an area, right click and hit simplify envelope. Once I do that, it's going to get rid of a lot of these breakpoints and it still maintains the same shape but just has a nice smoother curve, which makes it a little bit easier to edit after the fact, as opposed to trying to edit all of these breakpoints here, which can be kind of a pain. Tip number two is going to involve using pre-made shapes. So once again, I can select an area and I can right click and I can insert any one of 10 different pre-made shapes, including things like sine waves, triangles, saw waves, square waves, little envelope thing. There's lots of different options. But if I click on this, it's going to take the area that I have selected and just turn it into this nice smooth sine wave, which is really, really handy. Or I could try some of the other shapes. I could do the saw wave, or I could do the little ADSR guy, um, or a little kind of like curve, whatever you want. It's it's up to you. Um, but it's nice because they're already built in there and they're really easy to use. So you just pick the shape and select the area you want. If you select a longer area, it's going to include that entire area for you. I'm going to command Z to undo that. Method number three or tip number three is going to be either stretching or skewing your envelope. So we'll do this to our sine wave right here. So if I select an area, we get eight different boxes. We get three up here, we get one here, we get one here, and we get three at the bottom. The two on the sides allow you to stretch your automation. So if I click on this and go this way, it's going to stretch and override the automation that's there, but I can make this shorter or longer, or I can even invert it by going the other direction. This one's going to do the exact same thing on the other side, allow me to stretch either direction. And then the three at the top and the bottom allow you to skew it. So if I click this one in the middle, it's going to basically cap out how far that automation will go in either direction. So we can do something like this. We can even invert it by going the opposite direction. Or we can use any of the ones on the corners, which as you can see, we'll kind of stretch it going that way. So let's actually turn this one back down and we can stretch it going this way or again, invert it. So it's a cool way to get different variations on a shape that you're already using. So I can still have a sine wave, but have a sine wave that kind of curves downward, uh, or you can use it on anything you want. We could do the same thing over here, and we could start skewing this in either direction, again, to make some really cool, interesting motion or movement within the automation. Method number four, or tip number four, is going to be turning off the grid. So if I move any of these breakpoints around, you can see right now my grid is on 30 second notes, so it's gonna kind of jump from one 30 second to another. I make this larger, it's still going to be jumping in this case to eighth notes. So what I want to do if I want to turn off the grid is if I hold down the command key and then I click and drag or control key if you're on PC, um, it's no longer locked to the grid and I can put this breakpoint anywhere that I want. Pretty handy. On top of that, uh, we can also lock our envelope. So for example, if I want my automation to be specific at a specific number, say 1000 Hertz, I click and drag this, I can get this like pretty close to a thousand hertz, but depending on how accurate my mouse skills are, it can be kind of tricky to get it exactly where you want it to be. So you can lock this in place so you get a higher resolution when you're moving up and down. So to do that, you hold down the shift key, and then now as I move up and down, it moves in smaller increments, which allows me to be more accurate with exactly where I want this automation to be. If I hold down shift and I try to move left and right, it won't let me move left and right. It just lets me move up here. One thing to watch out for though, is if you hold down shift and you move left and right first, it still lets you do it. You have to move it up and down first. So up and down first, and then it won't let you move left and right. Or if you go left and right first, it will not let me move up and down. So it's whichever direction you move first, it locks it to that plane, either horizontally or vertically. Another really handy tip for moving around automation is say I want all of these breakpoints to move up or down. One thing that will happen to people is if I want to click, you know, select this area first, 
and I want to move everything up and down. If you click directly on the envelope here, the pink line, it just adds a new breakpoint, which is not what I want. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to mouse just underneath the pink line or just above it. And you can see now the whole area is highlighted blue. Now I can move the whole thing up and down or left or right or any direction that I want. Uh, and once again, if I hold down shift first, it'll move it in smaller amounts in either direction. So just make sure you don't click directly on the breakpoint if you want to move everything up and down. You want to be just above it or just below it. Uh, another really handy tool or technique for playing with automation is using the pencil tool. Uh, which can either be accessed kind of behind where my head is over in the top right corner, or you just simply hit the B button. When the pencil tool is turned on, I can just click and drag, and that's going to add and adjust my breakpoints wherever I want based on the grid size. So if I have a smaller grid size, I have more resolution for moving this around. If I have a larger grid size, it will have a larger resolution there. So really helpful if you're doing kind of stepped automation where you want each you know, quarter note or note to be a particular uh, value makes it really easy to just draw that in right there. Or if you have a smaller resolution, you can do things that kind of move up and down. Uh, another thing that I find really helpful when it comes to editing automation is your the key commands. Cut, copy, paste, and duplicate. These are your best friends when it comes to key commands. So if I wanted to copy this, I could hit Command C to copy. Go over here, Command V to paste. So Command X, C, and V, or Control X, C, and V, or cut, copy, paste or Command D for duplicate, which is really handy in situations like this where I have something like 16th notes. If I just hold down Command D, I now just have a continual 16th note of a certain pattern or whatever your grid is. Uh, so I use this quite a bit for just duplicating and making a certain patterns repeat over time. Uh, it can be a lot easier than manually doing this for however often, however long you need to do it for. And then of course, this can be combined really nicely with the skew. So I could be like have something like this, where it, it kind of rises over time at the same time maintains its shape. So you can start mixing and matching these techniques to get pretty interesting results pretty fast. But cut, cop cut, copy, paste, and duplicate are definitely your friends here when you're moving around with your automation. Number nine, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be locking your automation. And this is only available in the arrange review. Right now, if I take this clip and I move it to the left or I move it to the right, all of the automation goes with it. But if I hit the lock button, which is right here, which may or may not be behind my head, I'm not sure, uh, there's a little lock button. Uh, it's going to lock all the automation in place, which means if I move my clip, the automation stays where it is. So it kind of separates your clip from your automation when you're moving things around. So that's that little lock button up here at the top right of the screen. And lastly, uh, if you want to delete this automation, uh, and I don't want to have to go in and just try to delete all of it, you can just hit Command delete or uh, control delete if you're on PC, and that will just clear your entire envelope and just delete everything of that particular uh, parameter across the entire track. So no more automation there. Uh, so that's really handy if you're like, change your mind about your automation or you want to delete it or get rid of it. Command delete or control delete, depending on you if you are on Mac or PC. So that is it. Those are 10 different ways you can start playing around with and editing your automation. Some of those you probably knew. Hopefully some of those might be useful information for you. Uh, and regardless, I hope that this inspires you to try out some different techniques when it comes to editing your automation together. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. If you did, please feel free to subscribe as there's videos every Monday and Thursday, as well as streaming on Tuesdays and Fridays. So once again, thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you again soon.